DOE CSGF Fellow Yushia Luna Lin in the field of Applied Mathematics at Harvard University. Today I want to tell you about a project that we have been working on for the past few years. It's on developing a fully Eulerian numerical method for fluid structure interaction problems in 3D. The method is called the reference method technique. Here you're seeing an example of how it works. But before that, I want to tell you about fluid structure interaction problems, which are really fantastic and ubiquitous. Here you're seeing animals swimming and squirming to navigate through their complex environment. But we also see examples of engineering in machines and structures and vehicles in our lives. It's also fundamental to our physiology. And we see many interesting examples and phenomena in laboratory experiments and industrial settings. But if we write down the governing equations for this type of problems, it's often very nonlinear and very complex due to the interacting parts. So we need um, computation to help us solve this type of problems. Numerical methods for solids and fluids alone take advantage of their respective stress strain responses. Um, and these methods have matured over the past few decades. In solid mechanics, um, stresses arise from the total deformation in the structure. So it's often very convenient to use a Lagrangian mesh that deforms and moves with the structure itself. And typical methods here include finite element analysis and material points. In fluids, the story is different. Stress arises from the rate at which deformation happens. So it's more convenient to have a fixed mesh or um, as we call it, Eulerian mesh. So we sit at one fixed point and calculate um, velocity in the fluids. So the methods typical here include finite difference and finite volume. Now you can imagine simulating both fluid and solid using the same method poses a challenge. That is the dilemma of choosing between Eulerian or Lagrangian coordinates. If we don't want to commit to either of them, then we must come up with a way of communicating between these two perspectives. So our existing solutions for fluid structure interaction simulations, one of them is arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian. In this method, the computation happens on an intermediate mesh that's neither Eulerian nor Lagrangian. But remeshing the fluid part of the mesh becomes really important to avoid excessive deterioration and distortion in the mesh. Another family of method is called the immersed boundary method. In this method, the fluid is represented on a fixed mesh. However, the solid bodies are represented by a collection of Lagrangian points tethered to the mesh points by springs. To communicate between the two coordinate systems, a discrete delta function is used to either interpolate or spread quantities like forces and momenta. The reference map technique offers a different solution. It's mathematically formulated to be fully Eulerian. That means it uses a single Eulerian grid for both solid and fluids. Doing so comes with several advantages. First, on an Eulerian grid, you avoid meshing difficulties that are common in Lagrangian type methods. There are also many techniques that can be applied to parallelize a method that's on a fixed grid. Certain types of physics is also easy to represent on a fixed grid. For example, you're seeing a simulation of 20 sphere sedimenting in a box here, and the contact between the objects is easy to compute on a fixed grid. There is a bonus that comes with the mathematical formulations of the reference map technique. That is, we can simulate very naturally um, large deformations in the solid bodies. The key to how this works is to rewrite the solid momentum equations in the Eulerian frame. Take this object on the left. We can define a reference state. Typically, we can also define a forward mapping, chi, that takes us from the reference state to the current state. Then we can calculate deformation gradient, f, by taking derivatives against the reference configuration. Plug in this f into any constitutive relations, we get our solid stress. However, it's not typical that we have access to the reference state in an Eulerian method. So instead of chi, we define the inverse of chi, the reference map field, and we call it C. Using C, we can also calculate deformation gradient. 
But instead of taking derivatives in the reference state, now we can use the gradient operator in the current state. We take the gradient of C and take the inverse of that. That will be our deformation gradient. We can take this F and plug it into our constitutive relation and get a solid stress. But we need to pay attention and get the Cauchy stress. That means a stress tensor that's defined in the current configuration. We also need to evolve the reference map field forward in time. If we think about what the reference map field does, it takes us from where we are currently back to where we were in the reference state. And that position in the reference state will never change in time. That means if we take the time derivative of reference map, it should go to zero. And in the Eulerian frame, the total time derivative is the material derivative shown on the right here. So that was the formulation for the solid. Now we need to put the fluid and the solid together. The good news is the solid equations already resemble Navier-Stokes equation for fluid dynamics. And there are a few more details that we have to take care of to couple the fluid and the solid together. First, we need to define the fluid-solid interface. And for that, we use the zeroth contour of a level set function. And next, we only define reference map variables within the solid, but not in the fluid, um, to avoid excessive distortion in the underlying field. There are also some additional things that we need to take care of at the fluid-solid interface. Because of the difference in material responses, we're going to have very sharp transitions from one phase to the next. To take care of that, we blend together several quantities smoothly from one phase to the next using a transition zone. For example, we can blend uh, density and body force and stress responses smoothly from one to the next. The transition zone can also be used to define collision stresses when the bodies come into contact. This transition zone makes our method a blur interface method. However, the width of the transition zone is defined with the grid size. So as we refine the grid, the transition zone would shrink down and there we will recover a sharp interface between fluid and solid. At the interface, we also need to take derivatives for time stepping and solid stress. But as I said before, we only define reference map within the solid, but not in the fluid. So that means in order to carry out these differentiation operations, we need to extrapolate the reference map field into the fluid, but only within the transition zone. There are some common ways of doing extrapolation. Without going too much into the details, one of the common ways of extrapolating a field is solving a PDE associated with the field to a stationary state. In the previous iteration of reference map technique in 2D, we also use a combination of reinitialization of level set and linear regression. However, for level set reinitialization, we need methods such as fast marching. And that quickly become unfavorable in 3D because of its computational cost. So in 3D, we decide to go with a simpler yet as robust method of defining extrapolation order and building the extrapolation values. To define the extrapolating order, instead of reinitialization of the level set function, we use a onion layer structure around this object. And we combine that with linear regression that we know work really well. The way it works is that we take a solid that has reference map variables in the inside, and we define layers outside of it. And to define the next layer, we find orthogonal neighbors on the grid that don't have reference map yet. So here, all the red cells are the first layer outside of the solid. For each red cell in the first layer, we find existing uh, reference map variables in a small neighborhood around it and use linear regression to build a linear model and then extrapolate to the values at that grid point. We repeat this process until we fill up the transition zone and have enough data points to carry out our differentiation operators. This type of method is well adapted for parallelization, via domain decomposition, using MPI, or other types of techniques. And this 
also address some of the issues raised by PDE-based methods. For example, in PDE-based methods, we need to define a normal vector. And that becomes ambiguous when our solids have a sharp corner. But in this type of linear regression-based methods, we don't need to worry about that. And another issue in PDE-based methods is that some of the fluctuations at the interface can grow over time and cause instabilities. But linear regression is a smoothing operation. So even if we have some fluctuations in the underlying field around the interface, that can be smoothed out over time. By now, I have told you about some of the most known aspects of reference map technique. But the devil is always in the detail. To make our method work in 3D, fast and robust, we have used many other methods and techniques that I won't have time to go into here. But some of the honorary mentions include, for example, the projection methods that we need to use to enforce fluid incompressibility constraints, as well as the specialized efficient data structures that we needed to create to store extrapolation data so that they are only localized to the objects that they belong to. And critical for future applications, um, we needed also to think carefully about solid behavior design, for example, actuation and force anchoring. And in general, to make the fullest out of our simulation data, we built our um, custom data visualization tools with fluid tracers and specialized IO functions. Next, I want to show some of the example um, simulations in 3D. Here, you're seeing a sphere that's made out of a neo material that's been stretched to a really large extent, relaxing in viscous fluid. On the left, you're seeing a slice of the pressure field in the middle of the domain. And here, we have two soft rotors spinning in opposite directions, stirring fluids in a box. The fluid is not very viscous, um, so you can see some of the tracer particles are being flung off the structures. Next um, is another example of sedimentation. We have seen similar examples before, but here I simulate uh, a few more objects. So here we have 30 spheres of various sizes. Um, They're quite soft. If you follow one of the big spheres on the right, um, you will see that it falls down and bounces off its neighbor, deforms quite a lot and rotates um, and falls off. Another problem is a lid-driven cavity. This is a standard benchmark problem in computational fluid dynamics. But here I added a twist. I put eight very soft spheres with various sizes in the cavity so that they can move with the flow as well as uh, become deformed due to the flow. An interesting thing that happened here is the sphere on the top left corner that seems to have gotten stuck. It may not seem to be doing much, However, if we look at the reference map in a 2D slice in the middle of the domain, we can see that this ball that appeared to be stuck is in fact rotating in place due to the flow on top. Looking at the underlying reference map field is a great way to gain insight into the inner workings of this method. Here we visualize the fluid solid interface as well as the reference map inside and outside of the solid. We can see that our extrapolation technique creates regular reference map um, field values, even after the solid bodies have been greatly deformed and affected by the flow. We can also see that the extrapolated values only exist in a small extent around the solid bodies that they belong to. That's all I have for now. In conclusion, today I presented you with a numerical method that's designed to solve complex fluid structure interaction problems on an Eulerian mesh. We also have a full 3D implementation of this technique, and it's very suitable for many body interaction problems involving very deformable solids. So we can think of applications in fields such as 
active matter, and photoelastic materials. In my practicum at LBL, I worked with experts at CCSD to combine reference map technique um, with adaptive mesh refinement so that we can apply this method to model multi-scale fluid structure interaction problems that involve elastic fibers and elastic membranes and other lower dimensional structures. And finally, I want to thank CSGF for the continuous generous support over the last four years. And thank you for listening.